Hi everyone, it's Professor Pimper. In this video, we're going to continue integration by substitution and also talk about applications. In the previous video, we talked about how to reverse the chain rule for derivatives by finding indefinite integral formulas for composite functions. And we also talked a little bit about integration by substitution method to find the family of antiderivatives for composite functions. In this video, we're going to continue talking about integration by substitution method, but also use it with application problems. So let's pick up where we left off from the previous video. Example two, integration by substitution, find each of the following indefinite integrals using the substitution method. So the reason why we only did two problems for example two in the last video is that not all integrands will have the derivative of the inside function. So number three, the indefinite integral of the quantity negative four x minus three all raised to the fifth power, dx. So remember how the substitution method works for finding the family of antiderivatives for a composite function. You wanna find the inside function. In this case, it looks like the inside function is negative four x minus three. So you call that the BU. So U equals negative four x minus three. Now you take the derivative of the inside function. And so the derivative of U with respect to x is DU dx. The derivative of negative four x is negative four and the derivative of negative three is zero. And then since we're replacing negative four x minus three with a U, we also have to replace the DX in terms of U as well. So what we did in the last two examples was that we multiply both sides of the equation by dx so that we can get du by itself. So du is equal to negative four times dx. So notice in this problem that only dx appears, not negative four dx. So we need to replace the dx to be in terms of u. So let's solve for dx. So we have du is negative four times dx. Solve for dx on both sides of the equation by dividing by negative four. So dx is equal to du divided by negative four. So that means we can replace dx with du, but we have to divide by negative four though. So the integral, negative four x minus three in parentheses to the fifth power, dx, we wanna change everything to be in terms of u using the substitution method. So the negative four x minus three is replaced with a u, so you have integral u to the fifth, but then the dx is not replaced with just simply du, it needs to be replaced with du divided by negative four. So du divided by negative four. So now notice that the entire integral is in terms of u or a du. You have u to the fifth, and you also have du divided by negative four. So the negative four is in the denominator, and it's just a constant. We know that we can take constants outside the integral sign using indefinite integral properties. So it's really negative one-fourth is the constant or the coefficient that have been taken outside the integral sign. And then you have u to the fifth, du remaining in the integral. So what's the indefinite integral of u to the fifth du? Find the family of antiderivatives using the power rule. You add one to the exponent, that makes it u to the sixth, and then you also divide by the new exponent, six, and so negative one-fourth is the coefficient times u to the sixth divided by six plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And now simplify. You have four times six in the denominator, so that's negative one-twenty-fourth. So negative u to the sixth divided by twenty-four plus c. And now the last step with substitution method is always to go back and replace the u with the inside function. So u is negative four x minus three, so that means you have the opposite parentheses, negative four x minus three to the sixth power, and it's all divided by twenty-four, and then you have plus c for the family of antiderivatives. So let's try a similar problem. Number four, you have the integral three x times the quantity x squared subtract five all to the third power dx. So it looks like it's not just x raised to the power, you have a function that's being raised to a power, so we wanna replace that function with the inside function u. So let u be x squared minus five. Now take the derivative of the inside function. So du dx would be derivative x squared is two x, and derivative negative five is zero. So du dx is equal to two x. So again, multiply both sides of the equation by dx so that you can get du by itself. So du is 2x times dx. But notice you don't have 2x dx, you have a 3x dx. So you need to replace the dx again by changing it in terms of u's. So take this equation and divide both sides of the equation by 2x. So you get dx on the right side of the equation after you divide by 2x, and then you have du divided by 2x on the other side of the equation. So that means the 2x needs to be replaced with du divided by 2x. You have the integral, 3x times the quantity, x squared minus five to the third power, dx. We know that the x squared minus three is replaced with a u, so you have u to the third power. The three x is not being replaced, but the dx is replaced with a du divided by two x. So now notice what happens. There was an x left over, but it cancels out whenever you replace everything in terms of u's. You have u to the third power, and you also have du divided by two x. The x's will cancel out, and you just have three halves left. So three halves is the coefficient that can be taken outside the integral sign. So three is in the numerator, two is in the denominator. You have an x divided by x, that will cancel out to be one, and then you have u cubed, and then you have a du left over in the integrand. So everything will be in terms of u's. You have three halves, integral, u cubed, du. The x's just cancel out. So now we're ready to find out what is the family of integrals for this integrand. You have u cubed. 
So add one to the exponent and also divide by the new exponent. So you have three halves is the coefficient times the antiderivative would be u to the fourth divided by four plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And now to simplify, you have three halves times one fourth. That's really three eighths because you have two times four in the denominator. So you have three u to the fourth divided by eight plus c. And again, the last step with substitution method is to go back and replace the u, the inside function, with what we called it originally, x squared minus five. So you have three times the quantity, x squared minus five, being raised to the fourth power, all divided by eight, and then plus c, because you want the family of antiderivatives. All right, number five. This time you have the indefinite integral of e to the negative x times the quantity, one minus e to the negative x, all to the fourth power, dx. So again, it's not just x to the fourth power, you have a function that's being raised to the fourth power. So it looks like we want to call the inside function u, one minus e to the negative x. So let u be one minus e to the negative x, we know that with the substitution method, we need to take the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. So du dx would be the derivative of the inside function. Derivative 1 is 0. The derivative of negative e to the negative x, you have to use the chain rule to take its derivative. So the derivative of this exponential function is itself. It's negative e to the negative x times the derivative of the inside function, which would be the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1. So you have negative e to the negative x times negative 1, which will simplify to be just positive e to the negative x. So now multiply both sides of the equation by dx to get du by itself. So you have du is equal to e to the negative x times dx. So let's go back to the original integral and change everything in terms of u and du. So you have the integral e to the negative x, 1 minus e to the negative x in parentheses to the fourth power dx. We're taking 1 minus e to the negative x and replacing it with a u. So this becomes e to the negative x, u to the fourth. And then the dx is being replaced with du divided by e to the negative x. So you have e to the negative x, and you also have e to the negative x in the denominator. And everything else is in terms of u's. You have u to the fourth and a du. So e to negative x divided by e to negative x will just cancel out and just give you 1. So you have 1 times u to the 4th du in the integrand. And so this will simplify to just u to the 4th du. So now we're ready to find out what is the family of antiderivatives for this power function. The function is u to the 4th. The antiderivative would be u to the 5th divided by 5 plus c. And then the last step is to go back and replace the u with the inside function, which was 1 minus e to negative x. So 1 minus e to negative x raised to the 5th power and then divide by 5 plus c. That's the family of antiderivatives for this original function. Number 6, the indefinite integral of t divided by the quantity 3t squared plus 1 to the fourth power dt. So notice again, it's not just t to the fourth power. You have a function that's being raised to the fourth power, so that's a good choice for the inside function u. So let u be 3t squared plus 1. We want to find the derivative of the inside function, so du dt this time instead of du dx. So the derivative of the inside function will be derivative of 3t squared, that's 6t, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So du dt is 6t. So now multiply both sides of the equation by dt so you can get du by itself. So du is 6t times dt. So again, notice you don't have 6t dt, you have just t dt. So we want to be able to replace this dt to be in terms of du. So take the equation and solve for dt. So divide both sides of the equation by 6t, so that way you'll get dt on one side. So dt is equal to du divided by 6t. So now I'll go back to the original integral and change everything to be in terms of u and du. So the original integral was t divided by 3t squared plus 1 in parentheses raised to the fourth power dt, which will be the indefinite integral of t is not being replaced, so it stays. The 3t squared plus 1 is replaced with a u, so it becomes u to the fourth in the denominator. And then dt we're replacing with du divided by 6t. So it's du over 6t. So now notice you have a t that's left over that was not being replaced, but you have a t in the denominator from taking the derivative of the inside function that will help you cancel it out. So you have t's will cancel out. The 1 sixth will come out as a coefficient. So you have 1 sixth that can be taken outside the integral sign. Then you have the integral of t divided by t. That will be 1 again, so the t's will cancel out. And then you have 1 divided by u to the fourth. And then you have du is the integrand. So just to simplify this, this will be 1 6 as the coefficient, indefinite integral. The t over t is just 1. You have u to the fourth in the denominator. You can't find the antiderivative unless it's a power function. So take u to the numerator to make it u to the negative 4, and then you have a du. So let's find the family of antiderivative by using the power rule. You have 1 6 as the coefficient, so it stays. You have u to the negative 4. You add 1 to the exponent, so it makes it u to the negative 3. And then you divide by the same new exponent, negative 3 plus c for the family of antiderivatives. So 1 sixth times negative 1 third, u to negative 3 plus c. So that's u to negative 3. You have 6 times negative 3 in the denominator. That's negative 18, and then plus c. And then the last step with substitution method is to go back and replace the u with the inside function, 
which was 3t squared plus 1 in this case. So you have a negative sign, and then you have the u replaced with 3t squared plus 1 being raised to the negative 3 power, and then you have an 18 in the denominator plus c. And since the original function had a positive exponent on the inside function, let's change this so that the 3t squared plus 1 is raised to a positive exponent. So this will be negative 1 after you move the 3t squared plus 1 to the denominator. So you have 18 in the denominator, and you also have 3t squared plus 1 being raised to the positive 3 exponent plus c. This is the family of integers for this original function. All right, number seven. This time we're going to deal with a radical function. You have the indef integral of x squared times the square root of 2x cubed plus 1 dx. So again, it's not just square root of x. We can change that x to the 1 half power. This time we have a function inside the square root. So we want to use the substitution rule. So let u be the inside of the square root, which is 2x cubed plus 1, that function. Now take the derivative of the inside function. So du dx would be the derivative of 2x cubed, that's 6x squared, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So du dx is 6x squared. Multiply both sides of the equation by dx to get du by itself. So du is 6x squared dx. And now notice you don't have 6x squared. You just have an x squared and a dx. So you want to replace the dx to be in terms of du. So solve this equation for dx by dividing both sides of the equation by 6x squared. So you have dx is equal to du divided by 6x squared. So go back to the original integral, which was in terms of x's, and now change everything with substitution to be in terms of u. So it was integral of x squared square root 2x cubed plus 1 dx. Now it becomes integral of x squared. That's not being replaced, so it stays just for a moment. The square root of 2x cubed plus 1 becomes square root of u, and the dx becomes du divided by 6x squared. So notice, again, you have an x squared that was not being replaced, but you have an x squared in the denominator that will help cancel out, which will become 1. So you have 1 sixth is a coefficient. It will be factored outside the integral sign. So 1 sixth is a coefficient. Indefinite integral sign. x squared divided by x squared will just be 1. You have a square root of u, and then you have a du. So it looks like everything will be in terms of u. You have a 1 sixth integral. We know that the square root of u is just u to the 1 half power, du. So it's a power function. So let's use the power rule to find its family of integers. So it's u to the half. You want to add 1 to the exponent and also divide by that new exponent. So if you add 1 to half, you'll get 3 halves, which means you have to divide by 3 halves. Well, we know division by 3 halves is really multiplication by the reciprocal 2 thirds. So you have 1 sixth times the reciprocal of 3 halves, 2 thirds, times u to the 3 halves power after you add 1 to the exponent, and then plus c for the family of integers. And now just simplify. You have 1 6 times 2 thirds, that's 2 18 u to the 3 halves power plus c, and 2 18 is really 1 9th. So 1 9th u to the 3 halves plus c, and again the last step is always to go back and replace the u with the inside function, in this case was 2x cubed plus 1. So it'll be 2x cubed plus 1, all raised to the 3 halves power, and then divide by 9 plus c. Let's try one more for the substitution method. Number 8, you have the integral of 4e to the negative 5x dx. So again, it's not just e to the x or e to the negative x, it's e to a function. So you want to be able to replace the entire integral to be in terms of u's instead of x's. So let u be the inside function, negative 5x. We know the derivative of the inside function needs to be found, so the derivative of u is negative 5 with respect to x. So now multiply both sides of the equation by dx, so you get du is negative 5 dx, but notice you don't have negative 5, you have a 4. So that means we need to replace the dx to be in terms of du. So take this equation and solve for dx by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 5. So dx will be du divided by negative 5. So go back to the original integral and change everything to be in terms of u or a du. So the integral of 4e to negative 5x dx was the original integral. Take the 4 out as a coefficient. We know we can do that for indefinite integrals. So you have e to negative 5x dx. And now replace the negative 5x with the u. So you have 4 integral e to the u. And then we know that we need to replace the dx with du divided by negative 5, so du over negative 5. So you have negative 5 in the denominator. That can be factored outside the integral sign. So you have 4 divided by negative 5, or negative 4 fifths, integral e to the u, and then you have a du left over. So now we can find the family of integers of e to the u with respect to u. You keep negative 4 fifths as a coefficient. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u, and then the family of integers would be plus c. So negative 4 fifths e to the u plus c. And now go back and replace the u, which was negative 5x. So you have negative 4 fifths e to negative 5x plus c. That's the family of integers for this original function. Sometimes before we use the substitution method, we may have to use some algebraic technique to simplify the integrand before finding the family of integers. So let's look at example three, integration by substitution techniques. 
Find each of the following indefinite integrals using the substitution method. Number one, the integral of x times the quantity x minus four to the ninth power dx. So it looks like the inside function this time would be x minus four because that's the inside function being raised to the ninth power. So let's let u be x minus four. Let's continue the substitution method by finding the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of the inside function would be du dx. Derivative of x is one and derivative of negative four is zero. So du dx is equal to one. Multiply both sides of the equation by dx. And so you get du is equal to dx. So let's go back to the original integral and change everything to be in terms of u and du. So you have the integral of x times the quantity x minus four to the ninth power dx. The x is not being replaced with anything, so it stays. The x minus four is being replaced with the u, so you have u to the ninth, and the dx is replaced with a du. So this gives us a new problem that we haven't talked about before. You have a u to the ninth power du, but the integral is not only in terms of u's and du, it also has an x left over that does not cancel out. So what do we do to get rid of this x? We can't just cancel it out because we don't have a division by x. We need to use a substitution again. So if u is x minus four, let's solve this equation for x. So add four on both sides of the equation, so you get x is equal to u plus four. So take this x that was left over that did not cancel out and replace with the u plus four. So now replace the x with the u plus four in parentheses that's being multiplied by u to the ninth, and then you have du. So now notice that the entire integral is in terms of u's. So now we can find the family of antiderivatives. So notice you have a product here. You need to simplify this before you find the family of antiderivatives. So take u to the ninth and distribute through the parentheses. So you have u to the ninth times u, that's u to the tenth, and you have u to the ninth times four, that's four times u to the ninth, du. So now we have a sum rather than a product. We can find the family of antiderivatives now. So take the integral of the first term, so integral of u to the tenth, du, plus the integral of four u to the ninth, du. So find the antiderivative of the first term. It's a power function, so add one to the exponent and also divide by the new exponent. So you have u to the eleventh divided by eleven, plus Keep the four as a coefficient. U to the ninth is a power function. So again, add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So you have u to the 10th divided by 10 after you add one to the exponent and divide by 10. And then you have plus C because we found the family of antiderivatives. And the last step with the substitution method is to go back and replace the u's with the inside function, which in this case is x minus four. So you have x minus four to the 11th power divided by 11. Subtract four times the u is replaced with x minus four again. So four times x minus four to the 10th power, all divided by 10, plus c. And then notice in this second fraction, you can simplify the four divided by 10. Two goes into four, and two also goes into 10. So you have x minus four in parentheses to the 11th power divided by 11, subtract two times x minus four to the 10th power divided by five, plus c. That's the family of antiderivatives for this original function. So let's try a similar problem. Number two, the integral of x times the square root of x plus three dx. So again, it's not just square root of x, it's the square root of a function. So the inside function is going to be x plus three. So let u be x plus three. We know with the substitution method, we need to take the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of u with respect to x, du dx, derivative of x is one, and the derivative of three is zero. So du dx is one, again, which means that if you multiply both sides of the equation by dx, you get du is equal to dx. So let's go back and replace everything in terms of x's, now to be in terms of u and also du. So you have the integral of x, square root of x plus three dx, that was the original integral, which becomes the integral. The x is not being replaced with anything yet, but the square root of x plus three becomes square root of u because we replace the x plus three with a u. The dx is replaced with a du. And so again, notice you have an x left over that's not being replaced with anything, and it doesn't cancel out because we don't have a division by x. So we have to use the same trick as the last problem. Use the substitution again. u is x plus three. So if u is x plus three, subtract both sides of the equation by three, and so you get x by itself, and it's u minus three. So replace this x with a u minus three. So you have the integral of u minus three for this x times the square root of u, du. So now I'll simplify because you have a product of two different functions. You have u to the half, because that's the square root of u, times u, that gives you u to the three halves, because when you multiply, you add the exponents. So u to the half times u gives you u to the three halves. And then you also have u to the half times negative three, that's negative three u to the half. So that's integral of u to the three halves minus three u to the half du. Now we're ready to find the family of antiderivatives. So you have the integral of u to the three halves du, subtract the integral of three u to the half du after you use the sum rule. So now find the antiderivative of each term separately. So u to the three halves, that's a power function. So to find its antiderivative, use the power rule. So you add one to the exponent, that will make it three halves plus one or five halves and now divide by five halves, which is really two fifths. So two fifths 
times u to the 5 halves, minus, so keep the sign between the two different integrals, 3 is a coefficient, so you keep it, u to the half, that's also a power function, so to find its antiderivative, you need to use the power rule. So add 1 to the exponent, so 1 half plus 1 gives you 3 halves, and then also divide by 3 halves, which is really multiplication by 2 thirds. So you have 3 times 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves power plus c, as the family of antiderivatives. And so now if you simplify, you have 2 fifths, u to the 5 halves power, that stays the same, but then you have 3 times 2 thirds, that's really just 2, so 2u two to the 3 halves power plus c. And now the last step for substitution method, go back and replace the u with the inside function x plus 3. So you have 2 fifths times x plus 3 to the 5 halves power minus 2, replace this u also with x plus 3, so you have x plus 3 in parentheses to the 3 halves power, and then plus c at the end. So this would be the family of integers for this original function, x times square root of x plus 3. So let's finish up this video with an application using the substitution method. So application, we will now look at an application from business and economics that uses the substitution method to find the indefinite integral of a function that models sales for a company. So example four, marketing. Suppose that an automobile company is ready to introduce a new line of hybrid cars through a national sales campaign. After test marketing, the line in the greater Lansing area, the marketing research department estimates that sales will increase at a monthly rate of, capital S prime of T is 20 subtract 20, e to negative 0.5 t, and t is only between 0 and 24. And since t is representing the number of months for this national sales campaign, this means that the sales campaign will only go between 0 and 24 months, or 0 and 2 years. So number one, what will be the total sales, capital S of t, if the marketing campaign began t months ago, and we assume that no sales at the beginning of the campaign existed? So we know that if we're given capital S prime of t, and we want to find capital S of t, we need to find the antiderivative of this derivative. So capital S of t would be the indefinite integral of capital S prime of t dt, the change in the sales of the marketing campaign. So now we can replace S prime of t with the function that we were given. The derivative was 20 subtract 20 e to negative 0.5 t and dt. So there's two different terms. So you can separate this out using the sum rule. So you have the integral of 20 dt and then minus, and you also have the integral of 20 e to negative 0.5 t dt. So notice the antiderivative of 20 is just 20t, because the derivative of 20t is 20. But notice with this second integral that we need to use the substitution method, because it's not just e to the t, it's e to negative 0.5t. It's a composite function. So if we let u be the inside function negative 0.5t, we know that the substitution method, we need to take the derivative of the inside function, so du dt would be the derivative of negative 0.5t, that's, that's negative 0.5. Now solve for du by multiplying both sides of the equation by dt, so du is negative 0.5 times dt, but notice in the integral, you don't have a negative 0.5 dt, you just have dt. So solve this equation for dt by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 0.5. So notice when you do that, you'll have dt on one side of the equation is equal to du divided by negative 0.5. Or if you simplify, 1 divided by negative 0.5 is really negative 2. So dt is negative 2 du. So go back to this integral and replace everything that's in terms of t's now to be in terms of u and du. So capital S of t, that's the family of antiderivatives. The first term is 20t. We're already finished with that antiderivative. The 20 is a coefficient, so it can be taken outside the integral sign. So you have 20t minus 20 integral. You have e to the u because negative 0.5t is replaced with the u. And then the dt is replaced with negative 2 du. So you'll have 20t minus 20 integral e to the u negative 2 du. So everything will be in terms of u and du now. There are no t's that are involved with this second integral. So you'll have 20t, that's the first term, minus 20 times negative 2, that's positive 40, integral e to the u du. That's all that's left over. And we know the indefinite integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. So you'll have 20 times t plus 40 times e to the u plus c as the family of integers for this function. And then the last step for substitution method is to replace the u with what we said originally it was. It was the inside function negative 0.5t. So capital S of t would be 20t plus 40 e to negative 0.5t for the u plus c. So now let's figure out what the value of c is for the constant of integration. We're assuming that no sales at the beginning of the campaign. That means the beginning of the campaign was t equals 0. So if you plug 0 into this function, capital S of t, the sales would be 0. So s of t would be 0 when you replace all the t's with a 0. So 20 times 0 for the 20 times t plus 40 times e to the negative 0 0.5 times 0 in the exponent plus c. So we're going to find out what the value of c is. So 20 times 0 is 0. 
40 e to the negative 0 0.5 times 0, that's 0 in the exponent, plus c. And so the left side of the equation is 0. The right side of the equation will be 40 times e to the 0, that's 1. So you have 0 equals 40 times 1 plus c. And so c is equal to negative 40. And so we found out the entire function capital S of t for the total sales of the marketing campaign. So capital S of t would be 20 times t plus 40 e to negative 0 0.5 t minus 40. That's the total sales function. And now the last step, part two, what are the estimated total sales for the first 12 months of the marketing campaign? So notice now that we have the total sales function from part one, we can find out what was the total sales for the first 12 months using the marketing campaign. So if t is equal to 12, you can replace all the t's with a 12. And so capital S of 12 would be 20 times 12 plus 40 times e to the negative 0 0.5 times 12 in the exponent, subtract 40, and if you calculate this, you'll get 200.099, or if you round to the nearest cent, you'll get $200.10 worth of total sales per month with this marketing campaign. So this finishes our video on the substitution method and also applications using the substitution method. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know those as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about introduction to differential equations.